A boron 8 atom, which has a mass of 8.0246 AMUs, decays into a boron 8 atom, which has a mass of 8.0053 uh, AMUs, by loss of a positron particle, which is a plus charge, which has a mass of 0. 0.00055 AMUs, or by electron capture. How much energy in millions of electron volts is produced by this reaction? Okay, so the first thing I see is maybe there's a little typo here because I ask myself, how can boron have an atomic number of five and four? I know that for every element, it has its own unique atomic number. So once you change the number, um, it's gonna be a different atom. So first off, I would just change uh, the atom who has an atomic number of five or four. Now. Let's see, can I do this? Atomic number one is hydrogen, two is helium, three is lithium, and then four right next door to lithium is beryllium. So I'm just going to take this, and this is a B E, not just a B, a beryllium. But the five is correct for boron. But now, since we've got that fit figured out, let's just write the balanced equation. Now we do have this boron, five, right? So we have a boron, B. They tell us that the mass is eight, and we have a five atomic number, because that's boron's atomic number. And they do give us the mass of that, so I'm just gonna write this down, 8.0246 AMUs for this guy. And it's going to decay into, so we know that this is gonna be broken down into a BE, now we know it's a BE, eight on the top, four on the bottom. And they tell us the mass of that, so 8.0053 AMUs. And it's losing a positron particle. So if you're losing, that means that, you know, that's also gonna be on the product side, right? Loss means that you don't have it anymore. And who doesn't have it anymore? The boron. So we know that the beryllium is gonna have now that positron, which is a plus, a beta plus. It's the opposite of a electron. Still got a mass number of zero on the top, but it now has a, just a plus one on the bottom. And that kind of makes sense. Eight equals, you could use this as an equal sign. So eight equals eight plus zero. And then on the bottom, five equals four plus one. And they do tell us that that positron has a mass of 0 0.00055 AMUs. Okay, so now let's see what we got. Now from this balanced equation, we need to find out the energy. Now, if you're in nuclear chemistry and you're trying to find out you know, how much energy is being produced, there's only gonna be one formula that you need to know for the energy value. And it's probably the most famous formula in all the land, right? Mr. Albert Einstein came up with the formula. Does anybody know what it is? Yeah, it's E equals MC squared. You're finally getting to use it if you haven't used it before. Now, E stands for energy. So that's what we're trying to find out. Now, the idea here is that if you're using this formula, the energy is going to come out in joules. So we already see a little bit of a discrepancy here we need to convert our joule amount of energy, once we find it, into millions of electron volts. But we'll get there when we get there. The M value is classified as a mass, but it's not the total mass. This formula is only for a mass defect. And can I spell defect? <laughs> there we go. But I like to use the word difference. Now, Mr. Albert Einstein, came up with this formula to suggest that we don't live in a perfect world, as much as I would like to think that, and you know, um, we're not perfect, right? And neither is chemistry in, in the real world. So on paper, we, cl we call, you know, conservation of mass, but in the real, real, <laughs> yes, I can't say that, that term. In the real world, <laughs> um, we're gonna lose some mass and that's totally fine. All that loss of mass, that defect, that difference, where does it go? Well, it gets converted into energy. So that's basically what this formula is trying to tell you. So in order to find that E value, 
or no, in order to find the m value, we have to find out the difference between these two sides. Now on this side, we have two things coming together, 8.0053 AMUs for the beryllium and the positron um, AMUs. So let's add those up, 8.0053 plus 0 0.00055. And I get a total mass of 8.00585 AMUs. And as we can see, the left side, the reactant side, doesn't equal the product side. So if I take my starting amount, which is the 8.0246 AMUs, and I subtract them from how much mass is still here, I'm going to find out that difference. So I'm going to take my 8.0246 and I'm going to subtract it from this value and I get 0 0.01875 AMUs. That is the difference. That's the defect. If the mass isn't on the, the product side, that means that it got converted into energy. Now the main thing here though is that since this is a physics-based uh, equation and not chemistry, we have to use the standard units of mass for physics which is kilograms, not the grams, right? Or not even AMU. So now we're on a mission to go from the 0 0.00185 or 1875 AMUs, and we got to go all the way to kilograms. But I have a conversion down here to go to grams. Then we could just go to kilograms. So if I times by a ratio, right? If I don't want AMU anymore, we put it on the opposite side, so AMU going on the bottom here, grams going up on the top, and 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 24th grams for every one AMU. The AMU cancels out, and now we have grams. So this value, where what what did I do here? Did you did you spot that mistake? Say, Christina. Were you screaming at me? Because I heard you. Only one zero, right? There we go. So now I'm going to take this value and times it by 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 24th. Beautiful. And we got 3.11, I guess we'll call it that, times 10 to the negative 26, and that's grams. But now if I just want to get into kilograms, Grams to kilograms, all I got to do is just divide by 1,000. So, you know, either you're going to move the decimal place or you're just going to do something with that exponent. 3.11 times 10 to the negative 29th kilograms. And that's the value here. 3.11 times 10 to the negative 29th kilograms. Um, but when I do my calculation, I'll use the whole number, you know, the full number that's in the calc -y. So right off the bat, pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to get rid of this because we need to do more math. So I just need a little bit more room and bye-bye. And bye-bye to this as well because, you know, we use that already. Okay. Now, let's work on C. Good thing, though, because C is a constant value. It's the speed of light. Now, the more specific value for the speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. But if you want to know it as 3 times 10 to the 8th, that's fine with me. So we now are going to find out the energy. E equals the m, the c, and the squared. So the mass in kilograms is 3.11 times 10 to the negative 29th times... 2.998 times 10 to the eighth. We could plug this all into calc at once. So I'm going to take this whole value, times it by 2.998 times 10 to the eighth. Oop, let's square that. What am I doing? Square that. And there we go. 
2.798 times 10 to the negative 12th joules. But remember, the question's asking for millions of electron volts. Millions of electron volts are just capital M E V, million or mega electron volts. But I have it down here that the conversion is 1 million electron volt equals 1.602 times 10 to the negative 13th joules. So if we want to cancel out joules, we just use a conversion factor again. Joules goes on the bottom with its number, so maybe I'll just take this whole thing, plop it in here. That's beauty. And then the million electron volts goes up on the top. How good is that? Joules cancel out with joules. And let's see, I'm going to take the full number, divide it by 1.602 times 10 to the negative 13th. And there you go, 17 point. I guess, uh, oh, we got, well, we got two sig figs here, but that was with subtraction. Does anybody, does anybody care about sig figs? <laughs> um, yeah, no, not me. So maybe we'll just say 17.5, sure. 17.47? Sure. Million electron volts. And that is the final answer. And we are done. Woo woo. <laughs> I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Just gets the word out there that this YouTube channel exists. Thank you so much for all your support thus far on this journey. You guys absolutely rock, and my brother and I, we really do appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for coming here, for your educational needs, and for giving us such kind comments. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Always keep studying hard. I'm rooting for you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.